comes to friends and family. You praise in public and criticise in private. How do you mean to handle this? Why are you making it so personal? Oh, I'm sorry. I need a f flow chart. Caroline, sit down. You can all go f yourself. Oh, jeez. Episode three of The Real Housewives of Sydney has dropped and it is another cracker, clinger, corker. It is amazing. I'm joined by Carolyn Gaultier, the mysterious Carolyn Gaultier, to talk about her, but also the episode. And you have had up for the first three episodes, and I'm assuming more, quite a bit of storyline. How are you feeling? I feel exhausted. Really? Yes. You look amazing. Course. Oh, yeah, this is all the smoke and mirrors, of course. <laughs> Razzle dazzle. <laughs> Razzle dazzle, Exhausted exactly. because you were worried about how you might be perceived or? Uh, no, I just haven't really had to get up for anything for like, 50, other than the children, for like 15 years. So suddenly I had a schedule, suddenly, you know, I had things to do and I had to like reorganise my whole life and just like start being organised. I'm not good at that. Caroline said, you know, about working parents basically you know if you're not with your child 24 7 then something has to give and what gives is your child and then basically you're not doing a good job of raising them and i was like what like that's just not cool now this played out throughout the episode and there is some resolution that we're going to show a little bit later on but just firstly um it is an interesting conversation of course it is. Of course it is. And it's a very, it's, it's worse than politics or religion because it's very touchy because parents, you know, we all try to do our best and you can't get it 100% right because it's so organic and it's, it's the ultimate human experience. So you can't get it 100% right. Um, but, you know, this is what happens when you, when you, you know, take a four hour conversation and reduce it down to five minutes. So sure. it was a little bit out of context. I was actually talking about single mums, especially. I mean, like Sally says, if you, if you have a husband and you have a support system, of course it's easy. Of course you should do that if that's what you want to do. But my point is that a lot of single mums don't have the choice. Yeah, I mean, not easy, easier probably to work of and course, have Of course, it's never it's easy, but... Difficult, <clears throat> but... Yeah, so from your perspective, you were trying to bring up the conversation as a young woman who grew up without money, with... You oh, know... no, I grew up with money. Oh, you grew up with money? <laughs> I thought you, uh, your mum was working overnights or something like that, or am I... Well, I came... I was born in Prague. Yeah, Praha, um, if to... you don't mind. Praha. Yes, and my dad is a very famous jazz musician and my mother was a very famous actress. So we came from, you know, the top of the societal pyramid. Um, and, but when we arrived in Australia, because if you don't speak, you know, they didn't speak English, so my mum had to go from being a Mongolian uh, diplomat to being um, a cleaner at one stage. But one thing, as a child, what I saw um, in, in, in the way that they handled it is they stayed exactly the same. You know, they've always treated people, when they were at the top, they treated people the same way. When they're at the bottom, they never lost that uh, regal elegance, actually, that they had. I'll be wearing something highly inappropriate. My boobs will be out because, you know, where else am I going to put them? It's like, why are your boobs always out? It's like, well, where would you like me to put them? In my pocket, my bag, perhaps? Or would you like to hold them? for me while I, I go get a drink. What I love about you is that you're just like, yeah, I've got beautiful breasts. Yeah, I <clears throat> am gonna accentuate my curves and look fabulous. Um, you're not taking things too seriously, is that fair? Or I mean, you do take life seriously, of course, but. My main aim in life is not to take things seriously. And I know there was a lot of talk about the swing in my house. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> no one <laughs> I have a, <laughs> yeah, I have a swing in my house and everybody, they, and it's black. I mean, I bought it in London. I mean, it, cause it's, it's, it's a designer swing that people in London have in their lofts. And I saw it in a loft and I was like, oh my God, I have to have this swing. I put it in my house cause it's black and silver. You know, it has the color connect connotations to, I suppose, a se I don't even know what a sex swing is, do you? And, and I, what are I, the logistics of being, having sex on a... This is not me being interviewed. Yes, I've seen what? a sex swing, though. Yes, I have. <laughs> have you? Yeah. I've never... I had to Google it, and I'm like, my swing doesn't look anything like that. But the reason... And also the logistics of having sex on a swing. How do you even yeah, do that? I'm not comfortable. It's funny, because um, Chrissy Marsh said this funny thing to me first time I met her. She's like, are, are, you a, are you a porn star? And I was like, oh, thanks. I took it as a compliment. I thought it was kind of funny. 
um, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, she meant it as a compliment. If someone said that they thought I was a porn star, which would never happen for me, I would never be mistaken for a porn star, I would take that as a compliment because for me that means that I'm desirable, people think that I'm hot, whatever. So that's kind of how I see it. And I understand in the point of the show, it, you know, you don't want someone to say it in a derogatory way. But if someone went, wow, he looks hot like a porn star, I'd be like... Especially at my age. Like, if I'm 20, I would have taken absolute insult because, you know, we took things so seriously back then. But at my age, I was like, I didn't see it as an insult. You were saying, um, basically, like, if anybody works, if you're not with your kids 24-7, basically something has to give. And what gives is the children. And I just... I'm sorry that that, that was the way that it came out. There was, like, for me, there was no other way to interpret it. And Absolutely. what gives is not the children, it's not work, but what gives is the other stuff, the long lunches, maybe going to the gym, whatever, whatever gives. But yeah. these two most important elements that are absolute foundations for my life, that doesn't give. What I was talking about was my opinion. Yeah, of course. And my... from my experience. Like, yeah, you know, I get emotional talking about it because I saw the way my mum struggled. Yeah. And my heart really goes out to, to single mums. Yep, for sure. That have to go to work. Yep. If I have in any way undermined or insulted you in any way, I'm deeply sorry. Because it's not the way I, I meant it. I, 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 didn't, I, mean I like didn't think you were trying to insult me, but I just didn't feel... It didn't sit right with me, and I, I just I feel like it wouldn't be right of me to continue. I don't want to continue friendship and no, have it and so, have it you know like what? you know what ningling no. away at me. You got to let it out. Yeah. I felt so bad that I actually upset Sally with what I had said because it was definitely not my intention. Now, can I hug you? Yes. 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 You can't hug me with this. I can't get trapped in the wings. <laughs> what I loved about that was. Firstly, and I joke with Sally Obermeter, who I adore. She's the, one of the most beautiful humans. You can't not adore her. She's gorgeous. But she was like, I'm not comfortable with this. Mm. I want to raise my point. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, but this is how this made me feel. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're having a multiple hour conversation and that's one quote out of it. I mean, it's kind of like you're watching reality TV. Let's not take this too <laughs> seriously. But you both have a beautiful moment where I can see you, you know, past the boobs, past the makeup and the whatever. And there's an uh, there's other moments in the series that I've seen so far that I see these. And you know what those moments are? <clears throat> no. With your gorgeous daughter. Oh yeah, with my two yeah. yeah, it's really special when you go swimming with her at the beach. So that's what I take away from that mm. moment is that this is light and shade. Yeah. We're not curing cancer here. No. All of the women on this show are incredible women who mm. have achieved so much in their own lives, but you just showed a really vulnerable side, which I thank you for. Oh, that's nice. Well, I'm glad I'm glad it, it you know, it ventured into that because afterwards when I saw the backlash, I did not sleep for a week. Wow. I was horrified. Horrified that somebody like Sally, who is the epitome Mm. of how to be a beautiful human being, run a business and a family. Um, so I admired her for that. So to feel like I had upset her really upset me. Carolyn so Gaultier, you are a beautiful woman. You're less mysterious to me now. Oh, good. And I cannot wait to see more of you on the season. I'm excited. It's going to, it's actually, I am pleasantly surprised at how good this show actually is. It is good. A new episode drops on Binge every Tuesday at midday, so make sure you tune in. And, of course, today's episode is live now on Binge.